class, we are continuing chapter 12 in invertebrates and focusing this lesson on sponges and nadarians. The sponge. The sponge is an animal whose existence depends on the many pores in the body through which it pumps water. Pores are so essential to the animals in the sponge phylum that the phylum was named periphera, which means pore bearer. Adult sponges are sessile, which means that they don't move from place to place, but when they were in the embryonic stage, they were able to move a little bit. Now here is an image of a sponge, and let's talk about the various parts of the sponge. So we have amoeba-like cells, and the amoeba-like cell is able to move around by extending their cytoplasm, which is also known as false feet. These cells also have a superpower called totipotence. This allows the cell to make any type of cell within the sponge. And then you have collar cells. Collar cells have tiny hairs that trap particles such as bacteria and food particles. The tiny flagellum whips the water and keeps it moving through the central cavity. Once the food is trapped, the collar cells will digest it. And then you have a spicule. The spicule are sharp rods that comprise the sponge's exoskeleton. Sponges are made of spongin, a flexible fibrous protein, and also spicules, which are stiff little spikes made of calcium carbonate or silica, or both. The cells lining the central cavity are called collar cells, and they have the flagella that whips the water around. Sponges are often called filter feeders because they filter water to obtain food. Here's a little fun fact that loofah sponge that you may enjoy using in the shower. Here's a fun fact that loofah sponges don't actually come from the ocean. They are from, they come from a gourd in the cucumber family. So completely unrelated, FYI. This is a brown tube sponge called the Agilis conifera, and it is found in the Caribbean Sea. Really pretty picture. The jellyfish is known as the nadarian. Um, it belongs to the phylum nadaria. Jellyfish have tentacles with stinging cells surrounding their mouths. The bodies of nadarians have radial symmetry, which means they can be divided into equal halves by any plane along the length of the organism. The hydra exhibits the radial symmetry typical of nadarians. So you can see that this plane can um, cut right through any side and it's going to divide it in half into equal parts. Nadarians have either of the two general body shapes, umbrella shaped called a medusa or tubular called a polyp. A jellyfish has a hydrostatic skeleton, which means it's supported by the substance that fills it. The primary support for the jellyfish's body is a jelly-like mass that fills the space between the two layers of tissue. The body wall of a jellyfish is made of two layers of tissue. And the inside layer is the gastrovascular cavity where the jellyfish digests its food. It's also known as external digestion. Nematocysts are painful stingers found in special cells on the outer layer of the jellyfish and similar organisms. Each nematocyst has a trigger which can cause a thin tube to be forced out of the nematocyst to penetrate other organisms. Nematocysts function mainly to provide food for the jellyfish, but they can also be used in defense. I'd love to hear your stories of getting stung by the various jellyfish around here on the island. You can share that with me next class. So a jellyfish medusa swims by contracting muscles around the rim of its body. This jets water out of the gastrovascular cavity and moves the jellyfish 
forward. Jellyfish tentacle. People try to avoid jellyfish tentacles because of the painful stings inflicted by nematocysts. However, some species also have nematocysts in other parts of their body. Okay, you can see a really close-up view of this nematocyst. It looks almost like a barbed wire, something that I wouldn't want to get tangled with. Hydras, corals, sea anemones, and Portuguese man-of-wars are also nadarians. Each of these animals captures prey with its stinging tentacles and digests it in a central body cavity. Stings from a Portuguese man-of-war can cause intense pain in humans, and in some cases, even death. 